Well, Bards, this is a different type of recording. You're actually doing the recording and I'm doing the talking. This is going to be quite interesting, isn't it? That's right. We're coming to you live from the studio at uh, the Top Pub in Bunyip tonight. As opposed to uh, the studio from Bards' toilet last week. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's poor quality on the uh, technology front. We'll go with that. Yep, and what it says is we've got to stop being cheap states, get a sponsor and actually be able to afford the package. <laughs> Come on, they want twenty dollars to record this if we have to pay for it. <laughs> oh yeah, for tax purposes we might get a write off. <laughs> Possibly. week it was. Yeah, very interesting, wasn't it? Scores. Uh, the scores, mate, Hawthorne versus Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide, 15-9-99. Hawthorne, 13-13-91. 26 scoring shots for ourselves and only 24 for the Port Adelaide side. I must say, I did think at quarter time that was going to be horrible. I, I said this could be 80 plus points. What an effort to come back. Who comes back from 58 points? It doesn't happen too often, man. And I, I said, I think I said in the group and I said, said in the text message, and I've, I've accepted at half time, accepted we won't win the game, but I want to see a uh, fight it out win the second half. And uh, they did, did that end a bit. So we can't be too disappointed. You know, playing probably what's going to be a fellow top four side on their ground. And we went down by eight points in the end. It's just disappointing the way we started the game. I know that we concentrate on the Hawthorne matters mainly, but it would be fair to say that the potential top four played one another on the weekend. And it was quite exciting for the competition, if you like. Not so much us. That's what we've got to beat. But I reckon that's thereabouts the top four, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, free of surprising me a little bit. They've come out with a bit more attacking. I think losing Crowley's been a godsend too, and they've thrown an extra midfielder in, and they're looking the goods again. So you'd say that those four are the top four, but we'll need to start winning some games to confirm our spot. And Ruffy didn't kick any goals, which might have helped our cause, but your thoughts on goal kickers? We, we decided this year we won't go through them all, but we will touch upon goal kickers. Yep, so our best was Gunston with three. And what I'm going to do this year is just focus on the overall number of goal kickers because we like that spread. And this week we had nine, which normally would be pretty good for us. Double figures it seems to be a benchmark for a win for us. But nine's not too bad an effort. If we had have had ten, we probably would have won the game. Don't use spread. I saw someone complaining about the fact that people use spread. I don't want to hear oh. about spread. I hear spread, spread, a, spread. Who was that? We've had a good range of goal kickers. <laughs> Uh, well, and we one of our main goal kickers was on the bench for most of the game too, Poppy. Yeah, it's, what that, what are they saying now? A slight hamstring strain. Uh, so it looks like we'll lose him for a couple of weeks as well. And the other bloke that was on the bench for way too long was Brian Lake. Um, in the game that we went into, I think we've been playing short for a couple of weeks. We haven't replaced Frawley. Um, we've taken the risk with that, you know, having Gibson as our second defender. And then when we lose... Lakey, we were too short and it really hurt us. McElvoy going on a West Off just wasn't going to work and we didn't really have much other options. So hopefully this week things improve. Were you surprised after a while where Ruffy just couldn't get his hands on the ball, we didn't actually push Ruffy back and McElvoy up forward? Because McElvoy does play forward well and Ruffy, when he's not, not getting much of the ball, naturally goes back. Yeah, he's just... Kaiko doesn't seem to ever want Ruffy to be a permanent back, you know, and... It was probably the game calling out for it. The other option, although he was kicking goals, would have been even tried Gunston just for a match-up. But uh, look, it was disappointing, but I don't know. As Kaiko said, he put uh, McAvoy back against Geelong and it seemed to work. But uh, as uh, Wedder said to me during the week when I was speaking to him, he said that's the different sorts of four. You know, Westhoff moves around a lot better than blokes like Clark and uh, Hawkins. So, yeah, McAvoy definitely wasn't the man for the job, and I think we'll realise that now. And We'll obviously see another defender coming this week to replace Lake, but we might see two. North Melbourne are big. Now, I thought we were nearly going to test 
that theory last week of whether we should be giving all five votes in a loss, but they came good in the second half, and I, th- I think for the Bardslow, you can do a 5-4-3-2-1. I-, I did call out Hill. I would say that Hill, in his first game back, butchered a lot of the ball, and there was a couple of times where he had the opportunity to you know, change the momentum in the game, but Rioli, for me, was a bloke who was trying all night. Yeah, Rioli really was good. And there's a couple of others I thought went all right as well. Isaac Smith had a very good game. Gunson with a few goals. So there, there was a few folks that had a goal. Rioli was definitely in, in amongst it most of the night. So uh, he, he, is, he started the year quite well. All right, well, let's do the Barslow votes. All right, so I've got five to Smith, four to Gibson, three to Rioli, two to Lewis, and one to Jack Gunston. All right, well, let's take a quick break, and I'm expecting to come back with a blast, because we can't have a whack, because Wedder's not here, but everyone, get ready for a blast. I know that uh, Bards is waiting for it. Bards, well, blast time, and I wonder what you might be going to talk about. This grant, I'm, there's two targets here. Well, there's probably a lot more than two, but we're going to focus on two. One, one is a young man who uh, decided it was his job to interview Clarkson post-match. Well, he's a very silly boy, and silly boys do silly things. And a young boy, and I've actually managed to track this kid down, and I've got his name, and there's a photo here that I'd like our viewers to uh, have a look at. And yes, that's the sort of bloke that we're dealing with here. So the bloke's a lunatic, he's on the source, and he's, he's causing trouble. All right, fair enough. Kids be kids, they're stupid. This person I'm going to attack now, though, she's not a kid. She's an old woman. Caroline Wilson comes out on Footy Classified, and who does she have a go at? Clark, though, of course. Just about everyone involved in football, be it Hawthorne or any other supporter, thought Clark's handled the situation very well. She comes out and said he's a role model, he can't do this, he has to walk away, blah, blah, blah. She has no respect for him whatsoever, and I'm sick of listening to her, and I'm going to boycott that show for the rest of the year. Caro, give it up. Buds, I refuse to watch that show, mainly because Hutchie. <laughs> Harsh. He's a horrible boy, Hutchie. It doesn't make a difference. How are we going to get this show picked up by Cock Media if you're bagging Hutchie? All right, Hutchie's a nice bloke. <laughs> <laughs> And look, on that, Gary Lyon was no better. He was joining in. All right, they said Clarkson's done a backflip. He come out with that statement because obviously the powers have been said, oh, you just missed one point that you, sh- you should say you wish it hadn't happened. So that's always really done. He didn't apologise because no apology was necessary. The bloke's lucky he didn't get knocked out. And the other grubs are the people who paid this kid for the footage that he, uh, he had, which was nothing. And, and it just encourages more people to do the same thing. It's ridiculous. Yeah, look, a couple of points from my, my perspective. First of all, my first reaction was, if that was you or me, and we didn't have a camera in front of us, but you were being harangued like that, you probably you probably try and do the same thing. That, that was my reaction. So yeah. I didn't consider that he did anything that any other normal person would have done if they felt threatened in those circumstances. And I think the second thing for me was the extent to which the majority of the media and people generally felt that way as well. And so enough said as far as I'm concerned. I don't need to whack. I don't need a fair sucker to save. I think we just move on, but there is a question that needs to be asked, and that is how in today's society can we allow people like Clarko and Chris Fagan and Jordan Lewis to have as much freedom and interaction with people as possible without the, the, the bottom 1, 2, 10% spoiling it for the rest of us. Well, that's it. We're very lucky. You know, you go to America and try to ever ever speak to a player. It just doesn't happen. They're surrounded by bodyguards. They don't interact with anyone. We can go to a family day and walk up and have our photo taken on these blokes or get a Waverley at a training session. They'll stop and sign an autograph. And you see them before and after a game, they'll do the same thing. They're very accessible, our players, but he dickheads like, this bloke get, keep going, it's going to be shut down. There'll be security there and they'll be walked in and there'll be no interaction with fans and 
we'll lose something that's pretty unique to our game. So blokes like you need to pull their heads in. Um, stop trying to get your five minutes of fame. But the first thing that has to happen is stations need to stop paying for the rubbish and then that, it'll probably stop happening. And before we take one, one more break, I'd just like to say that the guy was probably lucky he wasn't carrying a selfie stick when he was doing it. Can you imagine what Clarko might have done with a selfie stick? Yeah, it could have been interesting. <laughs> All right, let's take another break. Bards, we're off to Etihad Stadium or BYO Stadium. Bring your own food. <laughs> it's a free open slather now, isn't it? Yep. Big Gill's got in there and he's throwing his weight around. The MCGs, everything's $4. Etihad, you're allowed to bring your food from outside now. Uh, very generous of them. Not likely, though. They, that's the one place I can get a Chico roll. <laughs> Well, that's good. I, I remember buying a pie then. It was stone cold. So. <laughs> All right. Well, 7.20, I think it is, on Saturday night, Etihad Stadium. I, I think it's an upgrade match for Hawthorne supporters if they want. So I think you might have got a text message today indicating that you could upgrade your ticket to Hawthorne areas. North Melbourne, Bards, you going to be there, first of all? No, mate, it's another one I'll miss. I'll be in the kitchen cooking Saturday night, especially at that, that time of night, 7.20. So if I get another message come through in my kitchen printer that tells me that we're eight goals down at quarter time, I won't be happy. <laughs> so let, let's get this one right, eh? All right, well, it's likely by the time I've edited this and, and we've put it up that Ryan Showmakers has probably been selected in the side. What a comeback. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Like, Obviously, he's got his detractors more than more than most, and... Uh, from all reports, he's done a full pre-season with the forwards, hoping to sort of show some sign-up uh, format up front with Box Hill and, and push into the side. And now he's going to be thrown back again to the Wolves and probably end up running around on Ben Brown, who's about five inches taller than him. So, big game for Shuey. He's, he's, he's got the experience. He knows how to play the role, and he can do it uh, on his day. So, hopefully, he's, uh, if he is in the side, he, he pulls his finger out and um, shows us what he's got. I guess the other option they may consider would be uh, the young Kiwi boy. Heatherly. Yeah, Heatherly. He had a ripper game for Box Hill. He was, folk, he was on the Hawks website with a, showing a few good marks that he took uh, playing in defence. He'd have to be promoted, of course, and I think maybe Caden Brand is out for long enough they could slip him onto the long-term list. Uh, so he may be an option. They may even bring two in because North Melbourne are tall up forward. Well, if Shuey comes back, he'll be the Stephen Bradbury of Hawthorne. <laughs> You know, I think his last game was around 23 last year. He hasn't been out for that long. No. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that the Spanger man's out for a while. We, uh, that's the one who we really want to see. We should see Shields come out, back in the side, and he's probably a swap for um, Piopolo, I would have thought. Yeah, look, it's going to be interesting. There's a few changes to, to be made, obviously. Woodward had a ripper game for Box Hill. I reckon he'd be a chance to come in as well. And you, you know, it'd be interesting to see what they're doing, what their plans are with what blokes like Anderson and Sicily, if they're going to bring him back in or out, or what they're going to do. So, I don't think we need to change up too much. Obviously, we have to replace Piopolo and Lake. Um, and as I said, we may may look to take one more tall defender, just as another option. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, but as you said, when they re- listen to this, they probably already know. We'll be surprised. Well, I'll tell you the uh, in the review of the game, the one thing I didn't draw your attention to was. Uh, White Cross he actually played a very good and consistent game, notwithstanding we were getting thumped. I was quite impressed in his comeback. He's he's looking all right. Some to sort of find his feet. He had 19 possessions on the night. Um, didn't do a huge amount with him, but uh, yeah, he was he was important at times. And if he can, uh, you know, he, he's a he's a first 24 or 23 player uh, when he's at his best. You know, we know Clarko loves him. He uses the ball well. He's hard at it. Um, can go back and forward. So, look, he's a very handy player. And he, I imagine he holds his spot in the side once he gets fully fit and he's uh, up and running. So, hopefully that uh, continues on. All right. Well, how do we win this one? I think we've got to win it in the middle, mate. That's that's a big thing. As I said, they they can go big up for Petri, Brown, and Waite. 
who obviously we know Waits hasn't got a huge record against Hawthorne over the years, but he is capable. So they can go big. We don't want to give him too much supply. So I think we beat him in the middle. If we can do that, they've got a great ruckman. If we can get a break even in the ruck and then win the win the clearances, that'll go a long way. Their back line's not as good as uh, against our forward line, um, but we need we need lots of supply of ball. They tend to have a ability to lock us down a bit the last couple of years. So yeah, we just need to run and uh, and see if we can break them open. Any chance they might try and tag Mitchell after the success Corns had on him on Saturday night? Yeah, that's a big possibility again, and I think Sam's got to be aware of that. And uh, they, they just probably need to find a way to, to, to bring him into the game a bit more if that happens. So whether he goes back to half back or even pushes forward, um, we'll see what happens there. But uh, it's going to be interesting. He doesn't normally get beaten there for more than one week at a time, Sammy. All right, well, we better uh, get into nearest to the pin. What are your thoughts there? I'm going to say Hawthorne by 21 points. All right, well, I'm going to stick with my 23. I think that might be my standard for the year. And uh, I do assure everyone that the temporary office is going to move into the real office come next week. That will allow me to have looked at uh, last year's nearest to the pin winner. I would like, though, if people could answer our question from last week, which was, who do they think won last year's nearest to the pin? All right, we'll see if we get some answers. All right, and on that note, and just before we go, did you look at the end of last last week's show, Buzz? Uh, no, as I said to you before, Grant, I've been that busy uh, with the house and whatnot, I haven't actually seen it. All right, well, I decided not to put the mugshot of the three of us at the uh, preliminary final against Geelong in 2013. I've decided to put credit. So when we finish and say go Hawks, hang on, it's no longer a picture and see what creative stuff I've come up with after that. All right, mate. All right, so on that note, go, go Hawks. Hawks. 